Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Well, more Broadway news for you. Some not so hopeful, some rather predictable. Now, the latter has to do with casting. It was announced that two-time Tony Award nominee Joshua Henry, who I love, will take over the role of Dr. Pomatter in Waitress. And current cast member Tyrone Davis Jr. will take over the role of Ogie. Now, Henry and Davis Jr. will join the previously announced Ciara Renee in the lead role. Now, Waitress has one show, is one show that's really been doing very well. Now, it's clearly changing color, so to speak which could make for some creative reinventing to go along with those yummy pie slices offered at intermission. Which brings me to my next almost Broadway experience of this past week, starting with the food concept. I thought I was seeing chicken and biscuits on Saturday, but lo and behold, COVID struck that cast and crew. Well, I'm now set for next week, but the show also announced its early closing November 28th, so who knows. Anna DeVere Smith's Twilight is also coming to a close. And that one does not surprise me. It's very well done, but long and tough going about the Rodney King beating and its racially fraught aftermath in Los Angeles. Now, I might mention that sometimes these announcements are accompanied by the hidden hope that folks will run out and get tickets. And suddenly the houses fill up, which may even lead to extensions. Well, I thought that might happen with Dana H. and Is This a Room? But so far, the early closing dates on all of the above are holding. But the big question remains whether tourists from other countries just now being allowed to come will go to the theater. The TKTS booth is where about 70% of the tickets are bought by tourists. Only half of those sales so far are to foreign travelers. Now, this is getting into holiday season, so the hope continues that that number rises. It better, because January and February are traditionally the slowest period for New York theater. Now, these these days will take hope where we can get it, even on TV. And yes, Annie will be the next live musical done by NBC, the first in two years, of course. Though all is not quite normal, one of the stars of the show, the delightfully hilarious Jane Krakowski, suffered a breakout case of you-know-what, and she's being replaced by Megan Hilty. The always delightful Harry Connick will be Daddy Warbucks. Warbucks. Annie airs live on December 2nd on NBC. So I'm accused these days of crying at everything, but I must say this was an emotional theater week if you knew where to look. I attended one memorable experience, and I streamed another one. The former was a piece called War Words, written by Michelle Colos Brooks. That was performed on the Intrepid. Now, I had no idea the majestic aircraft carrier even had an auditorium theater. But that's where a full house watched the New York Rep Company, 17 of its members, read the actual words of soldiers who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. I might say this happened on Veterans Day. These were powerful expressions, either solo or in interactions between the vets. The role of the interpreters during wartime really came through, how crucial they are, what they do for us, what we do for them or not in return. Now, following the intrepid, War Words was moving on to other cities, and I hope it becomes a perennial Playwright Brooks said after the reading that not only was she not familiar with the material beforehand, I literally knew no one in the military or anything about the military, she said. She reached out to those who did and those who served and started listening and collecting and ultimately composing. Now, Also Moving was an event that was put on by the United Nations Outreach Program and the Braid Theater in Los Angeles. That one was remembering the impact of Crystal Knot, a key event in the coming Holocaust. There was also a showing and discussion of a play called Violins of Hope, developed by the Braid. Now, it turns out many of those with musical abilities had their lives spared in the concentration camps. I'm sure you remember the movie The, P- P- the Pianist. Various people spoke at the event, scholars and those who are distant relatives of victims, though as one said, we are missing many branches of family trees. 
Another warned, as survivors of the Holocaust are taking their last breaths, it's time for yet another reminder. Well, she's correct, and yep, I'm still crying. Now, as for what to watch coming up, live or virtual or both, well, in your in your neighborhood, Great Barrington Stage Company is offering a crossing now available for streaming, well, starting on the 18th to the 21st. That seems to be this Thursday through Sunday. Who knows anymore? The musical deals with a group of migrants crossing the southern border and combines lyrics, athletic choreography, and elements of Mexican folk music. I personally am excited to finally get to see this one. And more good news coming out of Great Barrington Stage. You know it recently presented Billy Crystal's show called Saturday Night. Well, now Billy is taking that one to Broadway. That happens in the spring. Moving west, Los Angeles' Skylight Theater is one of the first to offer something new and original called a hit dog, Will Holler. It is receiving strong notices. Now, that one eventually will be streamed for the rest of us, so stay tuned. Skylight Theater, that comes from. The whiplash continues, and back here in New York, one Jared Mezoki has been dubbed an absolute wizard at making online theater feel live. Well, he has brought his newest work to the vineyard, apparently streaming style, called On the Beauty of Loss. It explores how the emergence of social technology has shifted the way humans collect memories and comprehend grief. Sounds very timely. You can check out the vineyard site for that. And further downtown, now this one is truly live, at least until it isn't. Stay tuned while you were partying, it's called, and plays through November 28th at Soho Rep. The New York Times critic wrote, there has not been a day since I saw the show that when I did not think about it. That's from SohoRep.org. It runs almost an hour. And by the way, it will stream one night, November 21st, on something called Twitch. Other people probably know that better than me. And the Classic Stage Company has finally reopened with its long-delayed version of Sondheim's Assassins. Live with a top-notch cast directed by John Doyle. I'll try to catch that this week and get back to you. Finally, I will close with another piece of off-Broadway news. It turns out that the sale of the Cherry Lane Theater, which is the city's oldest, has fallen through. So, Jill, if you have an extra $12 million, it's still on the market. Who is it going to? Who is, who is buying it? Uh, the Lucille Lortel. But they, and they already have, I mean, Lucille Lortel had the Lucille Lortel Theater, of course. Did they have anything? They have the Lucille Lortel right around the corner right. from the Cherry Lane. And I don't know why it fell through exactly. They were trying to ask for, uh, I think they were offering $11 million. Maybe they didn't offer enough because now they're asking 12.95. But anyway, the Cherry Lane is still available, and uh, it's a beautiful little, uh, beautiful little venue. I've visited it many times. I wonder, I wonder who will pick it up. I, 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 I tend to look on the more optimistic side of these things now, so I'm sort, yeah. of, I'm sort of curious about uh, who would, uh, you know, uh, all right, who's next? Who's next? Because it's it. Yeah. It makes well, it possibly a little more independent. I mean, a little more independent. No. Well, I'll tell you who's buying up the movie theaters that are going on, and that's Netflix. But I, uh, they bought the Paris Theater, which is sort of like the Cherry Lane of movie theaters. Um, but they're not going to buy a, a little, uh, no, you know, legitimate theater downtown. No, good question. I don't know who's got that kind of money and who cares enough about you know live theater anymore and history and all that. Oh, I, I, I predict she said. <laughs> Smiling. Um, uh, so the Good. Billy Crystal show uh, is, is Saturday night or Mister Saturday night? I saw. A big, is it called Mister Saturday Night? I think. It, yeah, I think you're right. It it had a, a there was a it was it was one of those ads that you like to see that actually announced the show coming in March or something. Yes, good news. I think that played. I, I'm sure I'm right. Didn't that play on Broadway like 20 years ago? Something. Something. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, I remember thinking he's probably rewritten it. I assume. Well, there's but, more. Uh, there's more to add now, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I had a, <laughs> a question that I've been meaning to ask you. Uh, I was struck to see on the front page of the Sunday Times an advert for Company. 
Yeah. So when when is that? Where is that? And then there's. I've a- got that coming. I've got that coming up soon. Uh, they're going to send me uh, my availability pretty soon. I think that is. Is it previews? Already in, I think it's already in previews. Opening, I'm quite sure, in December. I should I should be seeing that in the next few weeks. And that, you know, they want, they've got an interesting cast. It's all, you know, everybody's mixed up. I mean, the man, the lead character who used to be a man is now a woman. I know, and I wanted to, and I may get into trouble for this, but I'm going to say this as diplomatically as possible because I was thinking about this just prior to the show. One of the keys of the um man of of, of bobby way yeah, back bob. was his inability to commit and right. because he was of childbearing you know because you know because it was either time to settle down and do that or not so to speak mm-hmm. and with the cross casting i mean i know women have biological clocks etc and yeah. uh, so I'm not trying to get into any of that, but that there's just nothing you could do about the fact that men and women are different in their approach. Yeah, the only thing I'll say is this one played in England, you know, and got very. They're bringing the, they're bringing it over from England, and it did very very well there with Patty Lapone, by the way. She's really the bigger name. Katrina Lake is the lead uh, as Bobby, but but you know Patty Lapone gets all those great songs. Um, as one of the characters. Apparently, this is all over the place in terms of a gay character that used to be straight, uh, a bipolar, you know, I mean, everybody's switched around. Right. And, and uh, so I just, I just, and, and, and again, we were talking about Barrington Stage last week. That was the show that was put on at Barrington, back when it was in Sheffield, not not even, didn't have its own theater in the uh, Consolati, I think, auditorium that I mentioned, or maybe I've got the name wrong oh. again, two weeks in a row. And, you know, it was, it was very, it was, it was the quote, traditional company, but there was, uh, th- there was rhyme and reason in the uh, issues that people had that I don't think yeah. are so very different now. And I was just curious about how, um, but you'll tell us how how, how it works. Um, you know, yeah, with everything I, cross I was, cross. Yeah, I heard up. from the publicist from that show a few weeks ago who tried to pitch me an article about, and he went through every single character who is now changed to something else. You know, straight, gay, this, that. Um, and and, every, and you know, I couldn't, I couldn't get much interest in doing that article. People said, "What's new with that nowadays?" Or you know, that we knew about that. I, I don't know. It so, actually starts previews today, November fifteenth. There you go. So I probably, I hope I get in there um, within the next few weeks. Oh, you know, God. they're not going to allow people press in until they're well established, so to speak. But anyway, things are coming. I walked by was a Times Square last week and walked by the big sign for the Music Man. I believe it's at the Winter Garden, coming to the Winter Garden. That was exciting. Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio, robinhoodradio.com.